Corinthians 6, 18 says, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit? That means a whole lot more now, doesn't it? <laughs> that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. Thank God. Now let's look at Romans in 12. These words must remain in us. God wants to help us on a highway of holiness. In Romans 12 and starting at verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform any. Uh, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. We do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not want to conform to this world, because this world is going to hell in a handbasket. This world is off its rails. This world more, is full of deception and corruption, immorality. The very character and nature of humanity is broke down to their so, so susceptible to evil spirits. We do not want to conform any longer to the pattern of this world because the pattern of this world says anything goes and it's acceptable. It's acceptable to sleep around. It's accept any kind of sin is acceptable. It's okay to lie if you're going to get in trouble. It's okay to steal and it's okay to cheat. It's okay to all this corruption that's going on. This world system is whacked out. And we are not supposed to conform to it. But how are we going to resist it? One of the things it says, that in view of God's mercy, we offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. That means it's not always going to be the thing you want to do, and it's not always going to be what you feel like. It's a sacrifice. Why? Because Jesus sacrificed himself for mankind that we might know the living God, and live in him and him in us, making us temples of God himself in the earth. Right now, we're not waiting to be the temple of God. Once you ask Jesus into your life, once you receive the truth, once you receive, there's a receiving of the gospel. It's not just a believing. It's a believing and a receiving. I believed for many years in Jesus. I believed, but I never received him as my Lord. And when I received him as my Lord, everything changed. And so in order to live for God, we've got to understand that we have to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. Living sacrifices. That means we don't always do what we want. We don't always do what we feel. We don't always do what our friends are. We shouldn't have friends that are doing things that we shouldn't do. The word talks about that. It talks about we don't have anything in common with this type of people. We don't have, we don't have anything in common with sinners. Amen? We all have to make a decision in our hearts who it is we live for and what we're living for. And if we compromise, and if we, if we compromise what we know to be, just to be accepted by humanity, we will miss what God has for us. <laughs> Isn't this good? <laughs> I don't ever mean to come across harsh. <laughs> My delivery style, I don't know why. <laughs> Amen. So, we are supposed to offer our bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Remember Jesus said a time is coming where God is going to look for worshipers that worship in spirit and in truth. That's these kind of worshipers. He didn't say that God was going to come looking for an orchestra that played fine music. 
And he didn't say he was going to come for a, that he was looking for a choir that knew how to hit every note. He didn't say that he was coming for a frontline set of singers that held a microphone of six or eight people and they all sang in perfect harmony. That's not what God said. We have in the church, you know, I remember growing up, the choir was in the back, up in the choir loft. Somehow the choir loft made it to the front. Now, I'm not saying that's bad and evil in of itself, but it's so, so some reason the worship team became worshipped. I mean, she says, understand this. A lot of times pastors say the biggest problem they'll have in their church is the worship leader because they start drawing people because they come to lead people into worship. And then people start idolizing the worship leader and he gets exactly what happened to Satan. He got big in the head. Wanted to overthrow God. And then worship leaders think, I know just as much Bible. I know this. And I can lead these people to God. Yeah, and, and all the children of God should know the word. All the children of God should have an understanding of the word as they present themselves to God and they meditate on these things. There should be change. But there's a gift that comes to a pastor, a revelation and, and a teaching gift that the sheep just don't have. So you got worship leaders that are ministers of help. They're supposed to help the church and help the pastor. And then all of a sudden they start getting a gathering around themselves and then they split the church and take half the church out. And then they presume themselves to be worship, they presume themselves to be pastors just because they feel like they can get a following. <laughs> I'm not looking for a following. I'm not looking for a following. I'm looking for people that are sold out to Jesus and really, really ready, willing, and able to follow God and do what God called them to do. And so, understanding that. When God said in his word that when we offer our bodies as living sacrifice, holy, you would think that holy and holiness are cuss words in the body of Christ these days. People do all kind of things and think, well, I don't think God has a problem with it. Well, Jesus was sitting across the table from you or sitting on the couch watching you think he'd be okay with it. If there's any conviction, please stop. He said that we're supposed to offer our bodies as living sacrifice, holy, 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 and pleasing to God. Because this, this is our true and proper worship. And that's the kind of worshipers that God is looking for. Not people that have beautiful voices, not people that can play the instruments, not, not a big band, not a big orchestra, not all the frontline singers. Let me just say, if you have the gift, have all those gifts, it's beautiful. God, you're God's workmanship, and that's what he's working in and through you. But just because you can sing doesn't make you a worshiper. If you live for yourself, it doesn't matter what you sing and say. It's not worship. You can, you know, you can hear beautiful voices and uh, uh, I'm, I'm stories. Just I'll tell you stories I've heard. We're worship teams that this church, church is growing beyond. You know, just all of a sudden busting out and they've got a worship team and then all of a sudden they want got you know people jockeying for position and they want to be a leader and a singer and you're like, oh, you can sing in the background. No, I want to be a lead singer. There's a problem right there. I want to be up front with a microphone. There's a problem right there. And then, and then come to find out that all the worship team, you know, they had a huge worship team. They're all sleeping around with each other. That is not worship. <laughs> that is not holy and pleasing to God. If we're not living our lives and offering our bodies to God to do it as because we're the temple of God. Amen. We are dead in Christ, <laughs> yet we still live. And how do we do that? We offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to him. And that, that is our act of worship. 
whether you can, can't sing a note, <laughs> whether you don't know an instrument, you don't know the difference between an A and a C and an E. I'm not sure if I'm talking notes or vitamins, but <laughs> are there A's and C's and E's? No? No? I know they're flat things, too. <laughs> they're flats, <laughs> sharps, <laughs> but I don't know what any of them are. And you know what? It doesn't matter because that has nothing to do with true worship. So remember, we abide in the word. The words abide in us. And then remember that we are living sacrifices to God because we're his temple. Amen? And then as we are his temple, we are also his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Oh, there's some good, 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 good things for everybody in this place to do. From anybody in the sound of my voice, God, and it doesn't matter where you're at, you could be stuck in the mud in your life, and you could feel like there is no way out. That your outgo has exceeded your income, and your upkeep is becoming your downfall, and God can turn it around. It doesn't matter how, you, how your life looks right now. Everything is subject to change. See, everything is subject to change. We just got to be worshipers of God because we're his temple. In his temple, he wants to hear the sound of music. The hills are alive <laughs> with the sound of music. He wants to hear music coming from the temple. Amen. He wants to hear, let me just say, he wants, I don't have a very good voice. You could say, he wants to hear, I'm so glad that he, he's all inclusive. Mm -hmm. God is all inclusive. He, if you can't sing, he said, he just wants to hear a joyful noise. Not a sad noise. Not a mad noise. But a joyful noise. Amen. God wants to hear a joyful noise coming out of his temple. Amen. Can you make a joyful noise for the Lord? Just make a joyful noise. You might think, oh, I'm so sad. It's so horrible. Well, just know this, that it ain't over yet. The best is yet to come. I don't care when you wake up and how you feel physically, emotionally, mentally, financially, anyway, and whatever's going on in your life, just remember, it ain't over. It ain't over, and the best is yet to come. Say, it ain't over, and the best is yet to come. Hallelujah. We got to stop letting the devil lie to us because we got to remember we are the temple of God, and God's going to take care of his temple. God's going to bring to pass what he created you to do if we just continue. It doesn't happen like magic. We must continue to trust him. We must trust him. We must trust his word. We've got to trust what God said. Amen. God knows what he's doing. You know, and each and every one of us, we might not be where we wished we were. I don't know if anybody is where they wish they were. We might not be where we wish we were. And everything in our lives, you know, relationships, everything. We might not be where we wish we were. But thank God we're not where we used to be. Amen? And thank God that God is well able to get his temple to where they need to be if we could just trust him. It requires trust and faith. You can't have faith if you don't trust God. And you can't trust God if you don't stay in faith. Amen? Just know that you are the temple of God. The Holy Ghost abides in you. And not only that, he is upon you. We've got we've to work. He requires us to work with him with our trust and our faith. Amen. We're just going to keep stirred up in the things of Almighty God. In the things of Almighty God. I'm telling you, just recently, I've gone through gone through some things, not understanding. Sometimes you go through things like, 
I'm not even going to ask why because I know it's a waste of time. But I don't know what's going on. And the Lord always gives me a fresh word from heaven. Sometimes I get up in the middle of the night and the Lord will just give me five words of a scripture. I'll just sit up and he'll just give me, and I'm like, I got to look up that scripture. I got to see what God's trying to tell me. And it's always awesome. And it always sets me free. Amen. Thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. We're going to, I hope you, I believe, I know you got something tonight because you're all listening. I could say you're hanging. Hey, Sitting on the edge of your seat, listening to what God has to say to you tonight. <laughs> Amen. We're going to take this opportunity to um, to uh, receive receive our tithe. Your tithe.